Welcome to the Wallaway, everybody. This is Imran Nangawala, and I'm here with my good friend and my brother, Habib Qadri. Habib, we are definitely, we've done the temperature checks. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we did the temperature checks. I wanted to make sure. We're about six. Uh, four, 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 six feet. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, so four, that's four feet plus two feet right here. Yeah, yes, yes. So we got our six foot distance. Six foot distance. And we already checked all the last week. No fevers and that stuff. So you okay with this? Synchronize at, at three. Uh, One, two, two three. three. All, all right. right. There we go. Oh, all right. right. Let me, we got to get that beard <laughs> straight. All right. <laughs> so uh, we wanted to do this. This show today, ladies and gentlemen, because obviously our, our, our dear brother, our, our role model, Khabib Nurmagomedov, he had his final UFC fight against Justin Gagey, and uh, he won in an amazing fashion, and he announced his retirement at the end of the match. Yes. Uh, but being an educator, uh, being a national distinguished educator, a principal, superintendent, author, mm -hmm. coach, mm -hmm. I thought about having you on the show because more you know it's just it's more than about just sports right yes we see someone who's a role model we see someone mm -hmm. who's good with his family good with kids mm -hmm. good with his countrymen mm -hmm. someone who sets good examples mm -hmm. so what were some of the first things that you thought about when when you saw this when you encountered this person of Khabib mm -hmm. and you see someone like him what, what are some of the first thoughts that come up I mean for me being a, a sports fanatic right right and you know and, and and mixed martial arts has become a new fanatic and I know that, uh, I might have some parents might say, wait a minute, it's, it's fighting and, you know, t taking away from that aspect of it. But here's an individual who's made some commitment, right? And when you're not at just at a stage, at, at the highest stage in, in, your, in your field, it is something to look at. But then the, one of the big keys is not just the fighter, but you also want to look at the behavior and characteristics. Mm. Now, everyone's got faults, right? But when you start looking at at least the efforts that he's trying to make to make sure he's representing himself, his family, his country, and I would even say uh, his faith, right? I, I, I think there's, there, for me, there are examples of, of shining examples of how I, there's many things that I feel I myself can learn as an individual, as a parent, and then, you know, to our, our, to our young uh, youth. I think what, you know, before we get, we have, we've essentially come up with a list, Habib has come up with a list, he's written an article that he's going to release tomorrow uh -huh. on uh, some of the most distinguishable characteristics of, about Khabib. But I think one of the most amazing things is that you have now someone who's at the pinnacle of his sport. Yes. Right? Someone at the Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, uh, LeBron James status. He, uh, in, in, pound for pound, he might be. And tw the best. 29, I think 29 and 0. 29 and 0. But what we don't see is some of the arrogance yeah. uh, being conceded. Uh -huh. the, I mean, you know, he's someone who. Yeah. He has nice cars and whatnot, but you don't, he, he's not about the money. Uh huh. Uh, and he's done some interviews as well saying that, you know, look, I don't like the limelight. I don't like having all these interviews. Yes. He wants to go back to his village and spend time in his village. Nice. Spend time with his countrymen, his family, his uh -huh. mom. So why don't we get straight into the list? And we're going to also review some of uh, the most alluring clips that we found on the Internet that highlight some of the values that we've highlighted. So do enjoy. But what are some of the values that you that you came up with in terms of that really exemplify who this man is? I, th I think the first thing that's, that really sticks to you is, is the hard work. See, a lot of times people don't realize, you know, the hard work to become the greatest. It's time and effort. It's the two-a-days in the morning after, at 5.30, 6 o'clock ex exercising, then doing your work, coming back and exercising again, having all these small, you know, uh, fights. I mean, his dad even made him fight a bear, right? Like, right? <laughs> so you see from an age, and right, people don't realize the hard work, right? It's not like, oh... He was a black belt in Sambo, which it takes some time. Then you got wrestling, then hand combat, right? Jiu-Jitsu. So there are so many different levels that he didn't just have to be good. He was trying to be great at all those. Having black belts in a few different uh, styles is no joke. And then realizing that, that, that time and effort and commitment he had to do and, 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 and put forth and the people around him too. And I think that, that's one of the key factors that I, I realized is that what you can learn from is that anything to be great, it puts effort. You can have the talent, but then without, you know, you know, so, you know there's a con, con that says hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Mm. But when you got the talent and you put the hard work in, those are the ones where you call the goats. It's interesting that you mentioned that because he was talking about uh, training in Dagestan and they asked him about how do you train in Ramadan? So he says in Ramadan, we change it up a little bit. Uh -huh. We train two hours before sunset. So Ramadan, uh, f you know, for our guest is the holy month for Muslims. Uh, and it's a month of fasting, not just from food and water, but from sins and from thinking negatively and many different things. 
So he was mentioning that two hours before opening the fast, mm -hmm. that's when they would start training. Yeah. So basically, you know that, okay, I'm going to be able to eat and drink. Let's, mm -hmm. let's train now. Mm -hmm. And then they would, you know, eat, open your fast. You pray. You pray mm -hmm. the night prayer. Mm -hmm. And then they would start training again around 12 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Right. Um, and then he was speaking about how his father would take them up to the mountains, him and like a team, for like yeah. a month. Wow. No electricity. There's no civilization yes, up there. Yes, yes, yes. And his dad would rent out some plot of land. And right. he brought two builders. One guy was deaf. One guy was old. And it's literally like bare minimum. Wow. And they're training at like 2,000 feet above sea level, mm -hmm. bare minimum in terms of the luxuries of life. Mm -hmm. And they're just hitting it hard, right? Right, right. So we're going to go straight into the clip, uh, guys, and we're going we're gonna to look at this clip and we're going to examine it afterwards. Вообще, кто себя считает готовым, что он может по профессионалам драться? Вообще, кто себя считает, кто много выступал по любителям? А может, у кого-то есть там профессиональный бой? Так как у него нету боев, он стоит, настаивает. Кто себя считает, кто хочет драться, поднимите руку. Стойте с парами хорошими, смотрите себя, проверяйте постоянно. Смотрите, в сентябре 2-3 турнира. В сентябре 2-3 турнира. Август, июле, октябре. Сколько хочешь турниров есть? Готовьтесь, приходите, готовьтесь, тренируйте. Самое главное, не пропускайте все. Потом вы один раз поделетесь, если выиграете, да, иншалла, один, два, три, вы уже в коле входите, да, и потихоньку уже, вы уже знаете, что два, три, четыре боя выиграли, вы знаете, через два-три месяца бой, через два-три месяца бой, бой сделали, там, две-три недели отдохнули, пришли заново, два-три месяца отпахали, бой, и вот так потихоньку будете расти, если вы хотите выступать, тренироваться, не как геймбан, месяц потренировался, четыре месяца где-то там, это, Свои, своим движением занимается. Встанка вообще. За все лето, начиная с января месяца, прошло уже полгода. Сколько зарядок ты пропустил? Больше половины. А ты еще говоришь, что ты хочешь тренироваться, выступать там, я же хожу. Ты даже половина зарядок не сделал. Ты на половину тренировок даже не был. Как ты хочешь, чтобы у тебя результат был? Сколько тебе лет? 22. Уже надо выступать. Чем ты вообще занимаешься? Ты должен определиться, кто ты вообще. Боец или там, я не знаю, где-то ты работаешь, что ты вообще делаешь? Ты вообще деньги зарабатываешь? А? Ты уже должен выступать, каждые три месяца ты должен драться. 22 года, здоровья сколько хочешь. Ты понял? Определись уже, ты уже сколько лет ты в зал ходишь, месяц тренируешься, три месяца тебя там где-то нету. Ты, я не знаю, где-то в России, где-то в тюрьме сидишь, я не знаю, чем ты вообще занимаешься. 22 года, 15 боев я провел, 22 года. У меня было 15 боев. Это не считая грэплинг, рукопашка, боевой сам. Все, что борется, все, что борется, берется. Парсюду мы выступали. Ездили отсюда два часа, два дня, то есть на автобусе, на соревнования. Два с половиной, три дня на поезде ездили. Что просто где-то выступить не было соревнований, вообще не только по боец каналу что-то говорит. Сейчас сколько хочешь турниров есть. Выступайте, берите. 10, 12, 13 боев можно здесь провести, все. Ты можешь уже в Америке подраться спокойно. Вы можете спокойно в Америке драться, себе зарабатывать деньги. Так, 22 года, сколько лет ты тренируешься? Как я знаю, 7-8 лет ты тренируешься. Ну, 100% 5 лет. Столько здоровья, бороться умеешь, грепли, бить умеешь. Не тупой вроде. Или же тупой, я не знаю. Столько всего и... На месте стоишь, просто подумай, для чего ты вообще тренируешься, никакой цели нету, ни соревнований. Ты даже не знаешь, где ты будешь выступать. У тебя даже примерного плана даже нету, календарь бывает. Вот где, что, когда выступить, этого даже у тебя нет. Это не только к тебе, это всем обращается. Some thoughts. You know, uh, when you see the video, you know, it goes back to that first point that we were talking about hard work. And then the second point that I, I feel like something I learned is consistency, mm. right? And I always want to remind parents and, 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 and individuals and young students in anything to be good at, even in the academic world, if you want to be a good student, some of you might have that talent, just you can pick it up. But at a certain time, you have to keep up honing those skills, working on those skills to be good. Mm. Even if someone wants to be a doctor, mm. you got to make sure that you got to go to high school, four years, get good grades, right? Or go to college, then you got to do well, then you got to pet on cats to get into medical school and then you got to rock that for four or five years then maybe do a fellowship then do, do residency and you get paid so there's 13 years of commitment just like he's taking seven eight years to prepare to be the best or to be good enough to be a professional to get paid that same aspect in anything that we do if it's arts in any field the greats put time and effort 
reading, understanding, and putting time and effort. So I think that's something I realized consistency in here where he's telling that guy, what? Well, you're here for one month, you disappear for, for three months. Exactly. What I like about it, to go off of your two points, is okay, the hard work and the consistency, but people get caught up. You may have one good game. You may have, you may have had one good exam. Mm -hmm. But if you're not consistent, you may fall in love with that one good score, and yeah. you're like, I can, I can take the foot off the gas pedal, relax, yeah. and you just become mediocre again, right? right? So what he's really doing is like their life coach. He's telling them to chase greatness. Yes. And in order to become great, mm -hmm. like he said, when he was 22, he already had 15 fights. Yeah. Not including combat, sambo, this and yeah. that. But he says sometimes they take the a bus for one day, take the train for two yeah. days just to go fight, yep. just to go practice, just to yep. go practice your craft and yeah. practice against the other best, right? Yeah. And what I like is that, you know, obviously it's a different culture, right? And some people may watch this and think, you know, he's being a little too aggressive or he's being a little too critical. But let's be honest, you know, these guys are real men. <laughs> yes, yes. And these guys are from the mountains. And I'm sure these guys loved what he was saying and they resonated with right. it. But if you, if you cr critically analyze it, mm -hmm. what does he do? He starts off by criticizing him. Yeah. What does he say at the end? He says, you're fast. Mm -hmm. You're strong. Yep. You can wrestle. Mm -hmm. well, like, what's the problem? Right. So he, he, st he ends the criticism yeah. with superlatives or positives, right? right? That you have all these skills. Yeah. What's the issue? If you don't want to do it, then just say you don't want to do it. Exactly. So I, I, I think that video alone, people could microanalyze that, and that could become a, like a leadership course, sure. a, life, a life coach course. Yes. How to, how to break someone down, a bit, you know, break them down and right. build them up again. So and, and I think and that kind of brings up, because in his story, he brings up that, hey, I myself went through this. Right. A leader... Anyone at any position has to show that I've gone through the same process and that commitment. But in my commitment, this is where I got. Mm. And I think that's where if someone young, if, you, if you're young and you hear from someone, you, it's good to know their life story. It's not the end goal. What was the process to get to the end goal is the key, mm. right? And that's what we learn when we learn it from a, from a, from a religious standpoint. We, you, people might learn about individuals who, who were very righteous and their and their and their process to get where they needed to get to from business standpoints where people struggle with how to, how to get there people learn from that process right and then and the great ones share that and then they tell others how to do this and learn from my mistake right and and, and when you have that many there might have been some loss there might have been some failures in some of those fights mm. but when it they, by the time you got to professionalism when you get to the profession at, at, at the professional level, he's had so much training. He figured out where I'm going to learn my mistake. Okay, this is not going to happen to me when I went when it's in front of everyone. Where it's, there's going to be some maybe monetary benefits there <laughs> involved. He took it to the next level. There, there's a famous uh, former fighter named King Mo. I don't know if you know him. Uh -huh. He just he retired I think a year or two ago. He was a famous fighter for a long time. He fought Ramp Rampage Jackson a okay. lot of the UFC greats. So King Mo was the guy who basically told some guys in America and California mm. that mm. you need to pick up on this guy. Yeah, but right. he tells a really uh, fascinating story. He says he came from Dagestan, uh -huh. uh, you know, picked him up from the airport, took him to get some Chinese food. He was asking for halal. Right. Had no idea. Had no idea. Had no idea what halal was. So he ate some like vegetable dish. Yeah. Uh, but then he says that he got when he had one his first or second fight in the UFC, mm -hmm. the guy challenged him. Mm -hmm. Like it, it was a competitive fight. Wow. Khabib won, but he knew that, okay, like, I'm, I'm in the big boy league now. now. Yes. So as soon as that happened, they said that's when he joined the gym he's at now with Coach Javier Mendez at AKA. Nice. Because he's like, you know, I have to keep going further. I need to improve. Right. And that's where he teamed up with, like, Daniel Cormier, Luke yes. Rockhold, and all these champions. Champions, yes. Yeah. So let's get, we'll get to the next point, and I think your next point is, is it patience? Yes, yes. Talk to us about patience. Look, you know, when, when you look at this process, so... You put the hard work in and you're being consistent, but then you have to be patient. He went to 12 to 13 different tournaments throughout his years from nine. He didn't just be like, okay, you know what? I'm good. I'm the best from, from my country. Give me this title. Then you had to, he, you meet someone. You go through that process. You train with them. You get one fight. You get two fights. You get up to 13, 14. And if you realize when he had that one opportunity to get a championship fight, it didn't go that way. He, th he thought he was going to be set up for it. Then the second time that he's almost prepared, he, he, when he's trying to cut weight, he gets sick. Yep. So there's a process, right? He could be like, man. But when he, that time came, he was ready. And when he was ready, he was appreciative and thankful from, you know, from, from I think he's a religious man, so from God. Mm. And, and then that process that made, and his team. But that process of patience that we want to realize as individuals, as parents, as, uh, as, as, uh, as young individuals, 
anything that you want to achieve, there's going to be failures and you have to learn from it and you grow from it. And that patience is such a big, you know, when patience is a virtue, that is so important for uh, individuals to understand. Even as adults, and we go through our challenges, even with our own kids, mm. that go through the process and say, well, I did this, and I did this, and I read this book, and why is my kid this way? Or I did this, and I did this. Why didn't I get accepted to this university? I did this, and I did this. Why is my business not working the way it has to be? Mm. And say, well, you know what? Be patient. Look for it. Build on it. And I think that's what people forget. Everyone sees the end products, and they don't realize that process of hard work and consistency and there are guaranteed there'd be times like, man, I don't want to do this. Well, there, there, <laughs> if you follow his story, there are uh -huh. multiple times. Okay. So that's why I want to add to it, like in the sense that we, when we talk about patience, we don't understand that patience has layers yes. and different uh, levels to it, right? Uh -huh. So there's the fact that he was, he's, very, he's a family man. Mm -hmm. He's from a very specific culture, you know, sociocultural mm -hmm. background. Yeah. When he came to America, he didn't have his lifelong mentor, trainer, coach with him, his father. Yes. And his father was actually, his visa had been denied yeah. consistently, right? Mm. So that's the first test wow. you're here without your dad you're yes. here without your family your people your culture etc um you, you referenced the point where he said himself that he was being used as leverage to set up another fight and he didn't wind up getting that fight yeah. and sometimes people that that makes them retire that makes yes. them just go bonkers or crazy yes but the the for me you know the part that i really appreciate is that when he was going through his physical battles mm -hmm. so you mentioned the time he was hospitalized and he had to pull out because his liver was shutting down mm. but he's also had back surgeries Wow. So he's had like spinal back surgeries, right? Wow. Okay. And some, for some people, yeah. yes, yes. you have a back surgery, it's game over. Yes. And, you know, I remember a lot of people were criticizing him, saying he hasn't fought in two years yes. or he keeps pulling out, but he keeps things to the, to the, close to the chest, right? Yes. So he was having back surgery, not really informing people about this, mm -hmm. and that is what kept him out for some time. But it's so many levels of patience. Level, patience with your own body. Mm -hmm. Patience with, you know, the situation where your dad can't come. Mm -hmm. Patience with the fact that you're in a place that you're not used to. Okay. Patience with the fact that you feel like you're not getting the fights that you deserve. Mm -hmm. And now we see, because now we see the end of the story, right? Yeah, yeah. And you see how it's like a, it's a story, storybook ending. Yes, yes. So we're going to, let's... Moving we're, the making. <laughs> moving the, <laughs> so let, let's watch a clip where his patience is tested. Yes. And let's just, Mike, let, let's just uh, dissect it. Sure. What are you going to do about that? Is that the disrespect in you? Do something then, I'll just shut your mouth. Fucking fool you. Let's, uh, Backwards. Let's Thanks, Connor. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Assalamu alaikum alada. From the two of you, could we get an official prediction on the fight? Domination. His head bouncing off the canvas. All his pony talk is going to be put on blast October 6th. Do you have a round in mind? As long as it takes. I believe one. He's a glass jaw. The Chechens, the Chech my Chechen friends, the Vainaki soldiers, they told me that they have chicken jaws in Dagestan. And I believe them because I know a glass jaw when I see one. And I've seen this man wobble many times. I've seen his brother sparked unconscious in another promotion. I know he is afraid of a smack. And if you're afraid of a smack off me, a smack will feel like a double barrel shotgun. So I believe the inside the force. But... I have been wrong before. I will be prepared for five rounds. You're looking at a fighting veteran. I've came through it all. I've been through it all. I've been on both sides of the world. I've been on the boxing side and I've been on this side. I'm ready for any occurrence. But this man is a glass jaw bomb. And I'm going to shatter him like that glass was shattered. May God have mercy on its soul on October 6th. Khabib, do you have a prediction? So you see in the clip, his mortal enemy, right? Mm -hmm. He talks about uh, him as a fighter, saying that he's weak. Mm -hmm. He brings up his brother as a fighter, saying yeah. that he's been knocked unconscious. He talks about the Dagestani people by saying that, you know, the Chechenians mm -hmm. have told him how the Dagestanis are, mm -hmm. causing some inner country beef, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, talks about his religion, calls him backwards. Yeah. Off, before the clip, he offered him some alcohol, knowing very right, well that yeah. he doesn't drink. Yeah. So it's like at every level, he was being tested, tested, yes, tested. Yeah. And if you see him in the clip, I mean, I remember some people at the time were saying, oh, he, he seems like he's scared. Mm -hmm. And some people were saying, oh, he seems like he's very shy and timid. Mm -hmm. But it, that, that doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like he's really trying to remain calm, collected, and patient. Yes, I mean, and you see, you know, even true patience is when, when you are being attacked. Mm. And sometimes in front of others. Mm. Right, this is in front. It's not just in front of like two people. 
millions of people watch this clip, mm, mm. right? And to not lose it mm. and understand, because he knows at the end, my hard work, my consistency, and I'm going to be patient is because of a specific goal that he had in mind. Mm. And that goal was to win, right? And sometimes what we have as individuals, as leaders, as, as parents, as, as colleagues, or, or as siblings, or even a child, is that whatever goals we have, you can't lose sight because there's going to be things coming left and right, obstacles, uh, individuals. And that becomes so important. Like one of the other points that was so important, you know, for me is after patient is that loyalty. Mm. See, for him to go through that, as you talked about, his father wasn't able to coach with him. But at the end, when he had that opportunity, he's like, well, you know what? I need this person, dad, you don't know anymore. I got to follow this. I, ha I have to give in to my, my morals to just to sell the fight and say, so, well, let me take a sip. But no, he didn't do that. He had certain goals and said, I'm, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to act like him because he, you know, Conor McGregor, that's how he gets so popular. He makes so much millions because advertised because of his, how he is. Maybe I should do the same, dad. Maybe I could just do that. Mm. But you know, he stuck to that. He stuck to what he grew up with, even if his father's not there. Maybe he had some of his friends. Later on, he had more of his friends. But in the starting, he still had to stick to who he was. And the loyalty to where it all began and how and the process, he didn't forget. Mm. And that's what something we have to do as, as, as young, when you have your parents reminding you things and not to be like, oh, you don't know, Baba, Mama, you don't understand. There, there might be some things they might not get, but you still need to under, listen to them and try, try to look at it. But those core values that all of us learn from and stuff ha, is very important. And to be loyal to that and loyal to the system of how he trained and kind of followed through. As, and you learn new teachers. But he never forgot his first teacher, which is his father, which you see at the end of the fight, how much it devastated him. Mm. And you see some of the great individuals, performers and athletes. So whoever that person is, mother, father, some mentor, when they have that, they never forget those. Those first people who impacted you, made you just have that drive, never forget those individuals. I was listening to an interview with his coach, Javier Mendez, uh -huh. uh, from a couple of days before the fight. And they were asking. And you interviewed him before too, right? I interviewed yeah, him as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I interviewed him as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, Shout that's out that. to Coach Javier. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Coach Javier, honestly, I, I mean, you know, I've, I've worked with a few different talent. I've interviewed people, and I've worked with other people who interview people mm -hmm. by helping them set up their interviews mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I can say, it just seems like a genuinely mm -hmm. nice, humble, authentic guy. Mm -hmm. And like, talk about a you know, quote unquote, marriage made in heaven between yeah. Khabib and Coach Javier. And I could imagine his dad having anxiety, like, okay, I'm sending my son to America. Yeah. But you, like, he, he goes to the, the perfect person for him. Uh -huh. Like, you know, you, it's like Uncle Javier. He says, this right. is like my second father. This is my uncle. Wow. But Coach Javier was basically saying, like, even Coach Javier, he's, he's, he's a real, like Khabib says, he's a real Mexican gangster, you know? Uh -huh. He goes that, um, uh, he said, like, basically, I got a ready fighter. Like, Khabib's dad, uh -huh. that's his first coach. Nice. And he gave me, like, a ready-made fighter. Yes. So he, because he has this saying, father's plan, father's plan, father's plan. Mm -hmm. So whenever like stuff would get tough, Coach Javier would be stick to father's plan, stick to father's nice. plan. So even Coach Javier, now he's being loyal, right? Mm -hmm. He's paying homage to Habib's first and true coach, his dad. Yes. But that loyal, that loyalty thing is important because for me, like one of my um, one skill, one attribute, one value that I consider very important is loyalty. Mm -hmm. Not blind loyalty, right? Mm -hmm. Not loyalty to bad things and bad vices mm -hmm. and bad people. But like you said, the people who were there in the beginning, the people who had an impact on your life, mm -hmm. your family, your close friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you see with Habib, still simple guy. He wants to go back to his village. Mm -hmm. He wants to spend time, you know, in the Eagle Academy that they created in Dagestan, yeah. training the local youth. Yeah. He could stay in Beverly Hills. He could go to yes. the best, you know, downtown apartment in downtown Chicago, or Miami. Mm -hmm. But he wants to go back to the mountains, right? Right. And he's still loyal to his family. He's loyal. To, like when we saw that clip earlier where he's criticizing the guy. Yeah. I still think that that's from love and loyalty, right? Yes, loyalty yes. to what? To his people. Yes. So I agree that, that, that the, the, the loyalty aspect, I believe, in our era, in our generation, mm -hmm. is something that's not emphasized enough. Mm -hmm. I feel that enough people don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he's a perfect example of it. Yeah, that's true. And you know what's, what's also you know, amazing is that regarding loyalty, there was even a situation one time, like, you know, the idea of, like, his name. Like, like you know, why don't you just kind of make it easier, right? You know, the, especially the last name. And we have those challenges also, you know, just kind of being proud of who you are, right? You know, from where you, where your culture you come from. Uh, you know, my name is Habib. It's very easy. And I remember once in, in one of my, uh, my first middle school, just, you know, getting on a basketball team and starting. And, and, and you know, a lot of times, the co I got, you know, the co friends would call me Hobbs or something like that. 
and it would be a nickname. And I remember on my jersey, they had that name, Hobbs. And my dad's like, what, what, what is this? And we went back, told the coach, like, you just put Habiba there, mm. right? You know, just like 11, 12 years old, you're just trying to like figure things out. Yeah. You're just trying to fit yeah. in. So it's so important, this idea of being proud of who you are. So, you know, loyalty comes from at various levels. And I just thought, just uh, kind of keep that in mind. So uh, Similarly, like you have a way you pronounce your name, right? Yes. But these names are not native here. <laughs> yes. So yes, people yes. pronounce your name in multiple different ways. Yeah. Just, it, w w one group of friends. Yes. And sometimes you just say, you know what? Yeah. Co close enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You could pronounce my yeah. name like that. But it's very interesting because um, he doesn't shy away from correcting people pronouncing his name. Mm -hmm. And I like some of the justifications he gives in terms of the naming conventions, mm -hmm. which people are not used to. Yeah. So let's take a look at this clip. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. This is Habib Abdomanopovich Nurmagomedov. Now, Habib, that middle name is tougher than your wrestling, hey. bud. Couldn't you have gone with something like Alexander, <laughs> maybe Sergey? You know, simple nickname for us. Simple middle name for me. A little bit. No, this is, this, this is Dagestan name, bro. This is my father's name, and this is my name, Habib. You know, this is Dagestan name. That's why a little bit different. Say, say whole name, please. Abdomanopovich? Yeah, no. That, for this fight week, a little bit different. A little bit more pressure. Of course, this is true. A little bit more pressure, a little bit hard. But, you know, like, when I watch, like, how I feel, my weight, like... Like all my brothers here without my father, all my team here, you know, I want, they feel like these guys part of the, this history, you know, this is, I, I'm not alone, alone you cannot do nothing, you know, you have to be with Lion, you know, this is like pride, you know, everybody is here, I feel great and, uh, you know, I can't wait, Saturday night, so I'm going to crush good examples of loyalty, right? So loyalty to the culture from the sense that, look, this is, this is my name. Yes. This is how you pronounce it. Yes. Loyalty to his father, because, yes. in, you know, even in our cultures, our middle name, at least like yes. for us, our, my middle name is my dad's name. Oh, I see. My dad's middle name is his dad's name. Yes. So he's saying, nope, like this, like this is our culture, so th like this is part of my name. Yes. Pay, part of the way of paying tribute to your ancestors, right? Yes, yes. And then secondly, he's talking about the importance of his pride, like, so he's a lot, like saying we're lying, yeah. right? And we can't accomplish anything on our yeah. own. We have our pride with us. Right. So even though he's going to be fighting in the cage alone, yes. but it's very important for him to have his, his brothers, mm -hmm. uh, a.k.a. his team. Yes. And everyone should feel that they have a part in this. I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's, it's a great clip to kind of just kind of reiterate what we were just talking about. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, you know, his loyalty is uh, quite important. So the next one, I think, on your list is accountability. Yeah, you, you, you know, I kind of brought this up and you're like, what? what, what? Here's a person, hard work. 28 and 0. 28 and 0. Yeah, consistency. Yeah. Consistency, right? He's, he's, he's uh, uh, loyal, right? Loyalty w was there. Patience was there. But see, so when you have all those traits or you, you're working on those traits, you're like, look, I'm the man. Mm. I don't need to hear anything from anyone. That, it could easily come in. And you see that with so many people who get at leadership positions or they're finally have have made it that sometimes they forget and then they lose their character or they lose that they can maybe make a mistake and 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 i and i something i realized is that the the, the fight that he fought against McCon uh, yeah, yeah conor mcgregor was calm the whole time saw the clips fight just like man on point i'm like oh yes <laughs> and then that few seconds yep he lost his cool just lost his cool yep Lost his cool goes over. At that moment, right? Just not even like 15, 20, 30 minutes, like after the, you know, like, you know, the, uh, after the fight post uh, interview, he says, My father is going to be very disappointed. He said, My, fa my father is going to smash me. <laughs> smash me. Okay, right. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to be a little kind, kind about it, but he's like, yeah. So he realized that that's not my father's way. That's not that my dad, he taught me. That's not the process. <laughs> right. So that means in other fights when he's like, oh man, that was yeah. unfair, or have that. Mm. And now it might be like, well, dad, I was just talking about, because he was talking about you, dad, mm. our, mm. you know, the loyalty mm. aspect of family. But even that, you know, his father, the idea of like what good character is. Honor. Yeah. Honor. Yeah. And the way we do this. When you win, you win. And they have that. We don't, you know, like, uh, uh, they're not our teachers. He's not your teacher, right? Mm. His father's his teacher, mm. right? And his father says, hey, for me, guidance comes through maybe uh, of how to behave through faith, mm. right? Mm. And, and that comes to the, you know, that last part, you know? you know? And so that, I think, it was very important for realize that accountability and that faith how it connects because he realized, hey, make a mistake, I'm going to own up to my mistake.
So there's so many things to unpack from, from that situation, right? Yes. You know, he was, the first thing he got on the microphone afterwards, yes. he apologized to the ne Nevada State Commission, yes. to the UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, I know personally he told people that, you know, he shouldn't have done it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, he was upset because his, he knew his father was going to be disappointed. Yes. And I remember that when he went back to Russia and him and his father were invited by uh, Putin mm -hmm. to, the, to wherever, yeah. So Putin basically was telling his dad, like, you know, take it easy. On yeah. <laughs> I just found out, I found that hilarious because yeah. you're talking to a champion yeah. mixed martial artist exactly. and he's telling the old father, like, you know, right. take, take it easy on your yeah. son, you know. Right. He made a mistake. Right. Um, but it, again, it goes back to accountability. Why? You know, I'm a big San Antonio yeah. Spurs fan, yeah. and I know you're a huge basketball fan. Mm -hmm. But what's the thing about the San Antonio Spurs? Mm -hmm. You take Coach Popovich, arguably the, arguably the best coach ever, at least top three or top four. Mm -hmm. uh, and what made the team members buy in. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that he ho he always held mm -hmm. the star players accountable. Mm -hmm. And you know that in the modern NBA, yeah. you cannot always get on your star players. Right. They'll ask you to get traded. They'll, yeah. they'll, they'll ask to get traded. They'll yeah. ask the coach to be fired. Yeah. And he would always hold, starting with Tim Duncan, responsible. Mm -hmm. And then Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili. Tony Parker yeah. used to say, you know, sometimes I'd be in the verge of tears. Yeah. That's how hard he would be on me. Wow. And then people, the other team members, other teammates who are of lesser caliber, would say, like, man, he's really going in at Tim Duncan. Right, right. If he's going in at Tim Duncan this much and Tim's just taking yeah. it, we got to step up our game. Yeah. So I think accountability, when you're the best and mm. you hold yourself accountable, that trickles down. Yeah. And it's, it's something that can permeate to the rest of the organization, to the rest of the team members. Yeah, I agree. And I, th I think, and that's something that we could such learn just about life. Like, you know, hey, you made a mistake at work, be accountable, accept it. People respect you a lot more, right? How can you learn from them? Because we're all going to make mistakes. Right. And I think we got to understand that. So even if it's a person of faith, right? Yes, he's a person of faith, but he ha he's, he's in a field. He's in a field where there's a lot of aggression. Right. So for him to understand that. So even for you young ones, you know, who, who are in life, who get through those moments is having an understanding that, look, sometimes it's OK to own up and then learn from it and move on. And people respect you more. It's not a sign of weakness. And here's a great example. And, the, you know, the beautiful beautiful way of life is when you do something wrong follow it up with something good right good, yes and you see in his following fights for example i think after the mcgregor fight he fight he fought dustin poirier mm -hmm. in abu dhabi i believe mm -hmm. um and you know he immediately went to him after he choked him out he hugged him praised him mm -hmm. he took you know this list exchange shirt sign mm -hmm. of respect and he said i'm going to sell this shirt and whatever money i raise i'm donating to your charity wow so you see like okay Beautiful. Following up a bad deed with m multiple good deeds, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and he corrected his his way of approaching mm -hmm. things. So I think definitely a, a good example in that regard. Nice. You know, and, and, and that's awesome. And, and this comes back, right? You know, like his, his action of being good, good deeds. It's not just like being accountable, but then also the character. And this is where my last part, right? You know, of, of is being accountable is having good moral compass, right? And for Ai, for him, it's faith, right? He's a, he's a practicing Muslim. And, he's, and, he, and again, everyone's going to have that. Someone can pinpoint what he does this or that. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm a Muslim, you're a Muslim too, so we know that we all have our struggles. Mm. But for him, at least his life, or he's trying his best, and that's the part, you know, that's our lead, right? You're struggling just to, you know, be a good person, is that that has a moral compass. So when his opposite opponent is using vulgar language, he's not using vulgar language. Or he's going to try to, uh, you know, uh, say disrespectful things about the family. He did not do that the same, right? And that kind of shows that. And then when he does win, first thing, he's going to thank God or, you know, for his family. That shows that, look, at the end, this is not just by my own talents. There are others who self-support it. Some in this world and as a spiritual person, that's someone outside this metaphysical, realm. Metaphysical, yeah. Metaphysical yeah. Ha has, has helped him to achieve what he wanted to achieve. And I think that becomes a key factor where I, I think it's so important in life for us to realize that, hey, we need to have these moral compasses. You know, it, it's, it's the beautiful example that you brought up because human nature is when someone attacks you, what do you want to do? You want to retaliate, right? Yeah, yeah. So if I say, you're, like back in the 90s, yo mama, right? Yeah. What do you respond with? <laughs> yo mama. Yo, is, uh, <laughs> right. So Conor McGregor attacks his religion. Yes. The, co the common rebuttal would have been, okay, I'm going to attack Exactly. His religion. He didn't do that. Right. He attacks his father and culture. Mm -hmm. Khabib did not attack his father. And Khabib even brought it up. Habib brought it up afterwards and saying, like, my father like my father taught me better than this. Not yes. like not to criticize people's parents or this right. and that. And you know, he even said that like um we'll play the clip, but 
there's yeah. there's uh, so many beautiful examples in terms of why the faith has inspired him to be a better person. Yes. I think he's a great faith ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, and for the people who criticize, and I've, heard, I've personally heard from Muslims and non-Muslims mm -hmm. both saying that it's a violent, violent and brutal sport. Yeah. But you also have to understand the context. Yeah. He comes from a mountainous region yeah. of Dagestan. Right. And he like if these kids don't have you know, ways to take out their energy, yeah. Yeah. God knows what they're going to yeah. get into, right? right. Um, and there's so many other bad things and bad vices he could be into. And if we focus on one thing, mm -hmm. what about ourselves? Yes. Are we not going to put our own lives under a microscope and see how many things that we do which right. are wrong and right. bad and right. evil, etc.? And we see a guy like we covered all these categories, right? Patience, hardworking, consistency, loyalty. I mean, right. what, what other type of role model in today's age right. where all you have to do is swipe right, right. and you fall into the, you know, you 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 fall victim. Yes, yes, right? yes. And the guy, we know that he's so far pretty much clean. Oh, but let's take a look at protect him, yeah. yeah. Let's take a look at this clip and we'll comment on it. Yes, yes. Habib, the eagle, Alhamdulillah. I want to say something. I want I want to stay humble. But Alhamdulillah. Everything God gave me. And Undisputed UFC lightweight champion of the world, Khabib, the Eagle, Nurmagomedov! First of all, I want to say Alhamdulillah. Without God, we cannot do nothing. Everything is nothing. You know, number one, believe on your one God. No, 26 and all, 10 and all in UFC. UFC undisputed, undefeated, lightweight champion. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. You become champion, this is not everything. You have to be greatest outside too. Like, I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I never drink. I'll tell you, some booze are parties. I never drink. You're mad backwards. No. Khabib, uh, assalamu alaikum. And uh, Connor, congrats on uh, proper 12. Yeah, you cannot say salam alaikum and congrats about whiskey. When come Ramadan, this is everything for me. I don't think about fight because I believe in one God. Uh, this is my religion. Religion for me number one. Sport is not for me number one. Sometimes like when you have, when you're hungry, you're different. You know, sometimes when you have money, you you become different. You know, that's why this is two big difference. You have to control your your emotional, your, like everything. You have to, you have to control because you big star right now. How you can punch old people or when you one of the best fighter in the world, you know, and you can touch people and <laughs> this guy can die, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, if you punch someone and he go down, fell down, and, you know, he can die, everything can happen. You have to control your arms, legs, mind, mental, emotional, everything, and, you know. This is show how he change with money. Most crazy things, I think, Famous or money is like almost same. Mm -hmm. why, do, why, why, like why do you act different then? Because you're famous, you're one of the best fighters in the world, you've got money. Is it your upbringing in Dagestan? Is, is that what it is? Uh, are, are people from Dagestan very similar with the way that they look at life? Or is Dagest it, uh, or is it in Dagestan we have bad people and good people too, like everywhere. I think about religion, mm -hmm. because of religion. Religion helped me about this. Only religion. First of all, and second, and uh, second, like my parents, what they give me. I think two things. So you see, like in terms of the, the, the you know, where he gets his spiritual or moral influence or inspiration uh, and how it's affected him, right? And it's, I think one thing that's very impressive for me is unapologetically Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. Where in an era, we live in an era where mm -hmm. sometimes you got to hide your faith, right? Or you mm -hmm. got, oh, no, 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 you know, no. We, yes. we don't we don't do that you know right but you see like no he's not embarrassed at all he's not embarrassed mm. by his name his culture his religion he's, mm. a, he's a man's man right but um you know even like so what the one of the clips they're in new york and you know new york like I, the way i look at it like 9 11 happened in new york yeah. you're in uh madison square garden mm -hmm. and goes into prostration mm -hmm. thanks god says arabic terminologies but it seems genuine right he's not mm -hmm. trying to rub it in anybody's face right, right. right. Um, but then he's also in that in the last clip where he's talking to the interviewer from BT, like he's talking about how fame changes people, mm -hmm. right? And for him, 
money and fame. He says, and both are dangerous. Yeah. Yes, yes. And he says, he was talking indirectly, he's talking about Conor McGregor saying, like, mm. how could you punch an old man in the head? Because Conor McGregor, he punched an old man in the mm. head. Mm. He says, you know, your hands are like weapons. You, you, you're a fighter. You could kill somebody. Right. So, and then the guy asks him, says, well, you're a fighter. You're famous. You have money. Why hasn't it changed you? So he says, number one, religion. Okay. Yeah. And number two, parents. So we go back to the loyalty, right? Yep, yep. So wh wh what do you think about the clip? Yeah, I, I think th this is a great clip that kind of shows you how having that moral compass of, of, of being conscious of God plays a big part in, in life. Because no doubt about it, it is something that maybe there's always temptation, right? I think for anyone, and even if it's even a little bit, oh, maybe a little bit, you never know where it could go, right? And then you could, you could lose yourself. And that comes back to how were you, you know, what is the goals that your, your dad tried to have for you, that process, and what were some of the, you know, moral compass uh, values that he was trying to instill in you, right? And I think when you said faith and, 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 and parents, and then when both of them are on the same page, where faith and, and, and parents come and say, and these are two, it just helps in that process. And I think this is something that for, especially now, the never, born, the never in society, where people think when you have to be successful, something has to give, mm. right? Something has to give. And a lot of times it's your values, mm. your beliefs, and when when you could get individuals who go through that and will make their mistakes, like you know, Muhammad Ali is another one, right? Yes, everyone's had their mistakes here and there, but at the end, that that played a big goal. His faith played a big process of him to dealing with things and going through that processes, right? Hakeem Olajuwon, he goes through his process, and later on, as he wins his championship, when he's closer to God. He wins those championships, right? So, mm. so you'll see that even in sports, and you can go on, on life, right? like as people kind of rethink, and, and so you can have some skills, but you take it to the next level. Yeah. I think you know the Muhammad Ali example is great because I think you, you have to connect parenting to that, right? Yeah. So even when someone uh, embraces a certain way of life, the things that you have from your old life, mm -hmm. they're always going to, at times, rear their ugly head, right? Mm -hmm. So for in some cases, if you're used to being with different women, yeah. Even if you embrace a new way of life, that might always haunt you or come back right. to get you, right? But that's why when we bring it back to Habib, you see, that's where his father shines, right? Mm -hmm. Because his father kept him busy from a young age. Mm -hmm. He kept him around a certain group of people. Mm -hmm. He sent him to America to become a mixed martial artist in, mm -hmm. his, you know, in his early to mid-20s. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's very important for parents, I believe, to keep their kids busy with doing good things. So even if your kid is always playing sports, you know, because in our generation, yeah. if you played sports all the time, yeah. Your parents would criticize you. Yeah. What, you're always outside. Right. You're, you're playing basketball. You're playing football. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would get yes, it all yes, the time. Yes, yeah. But when we look at what's going on today, mm. I mean, let's hope that our kids are you know, <laughs> just playing sports. Right. So. And, and, and I think even in, in, in playing sports, after school clubs, any activity, like where there's that sense of belonging is right. huge. But as parents, just not sending them and have that. See, what's amazing is dad didn't say I could go fight. He was in that process. Not everyone's going to be coaches. Mm. But you still have to be involved, figure out, hey, is this the right coach for you? Is this the same? Even in that coaching, is the value still the same, right? So even if you have that goal, what parents are like, well, this sport could be this way because I heard of this. Like, well, if you be involved in whatever activity that they want to be in, whatever skill, the hobby that they want to do, even in school, you will be involved. And you're involved, it's research shows in any field, when adults are involved, or you have a mentor involved in that child's life, they are more successful, right? And when everyone's buying into that same goal, you know, grades, you know, business, mm. job, mm. you know, family structure, whatever they want to try to achieve, that, that's going to be the key factor. And then you'll see that, how, how that, that's played a big part, or, you know, of, of, of combining moral compass, faith, spirituality to what the parents' views are, and then kind of has that, and his fighting, which played a big part. And then you'll see his mom says, after this, you know, fight, he promised his mom. Yep. So it came back to value. He's like, come on, mom, I can make, maybe make another $10 million here. Easy, yeah. But at the end, that, that, that's, he's not going to let that go. And so, you know, it's something that, you know, I always, you know, I pray that God protect him and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and make things easy for him mm -hmm. as, in his future and stuff like that. And then hopefully, you know, blesses him this world and the best, blesses him in the hereafter. Mm -hmm. Like all of us, everyone here, like, you know, right. that we always want to stress that we always want to strive for the best. And then, you know, and then, you know, and then with, with good character and behavior and reach our goals. I think uh, thank you for your time, Habib. It was yeah. it was a great time discussing and deconstructing uh, yeah. this man's career and his journey. Yes. Hopefully, you know, parents, you guys can take benefit from this because, you know, 
our, our, our kids and ourselves we're looking for greatness and obviously there's greatness in multiple different areas everyone doesn't have to be a fighter you don't have to be a basketball player you could be a computer programmer or researcher a molecular biologist right you could be anything that you want but you should be pursuing excellence and you should be employing and teaching and instilling hard work into your children that things don't just come they're not going to be just handed to you the people who truly value what they get are the ones who put in the hard work right because they realize there was a time where I didn't have these things so instill those good values in your kids and hopefully they will attain a level where they're um, impacting society for the better. So thank you guys once more, while away listeners, like and subscribe. We have the legend himself, Habib Qadri here, the, the, the educator, uh, the author, and uh, he'll be on the show much more. So thank you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Spending time with Khabib in Dagestan, like meeting his father, going into the mountains and things like I just don't see nobody beating him. I'm sorry what you throw at him. You're In not what gonna, way? I just feel like just his pedigree of where he's from. It's nothing that's going to break that guy. It's not, you can't, what are you going to do? It, I just don't think there's nothing you can do. After going to Dagestan and seeing how those people live and how they, they're, they're cold and their they, their values in of what, how they in live. What, way? What, what was so convincing? Well, just how strict the faith is over there, right? And they tie in everything they do to their faith. It's sort of like how Ali was, like, I'm not going to lose because of Allah and things like that. And I truly believe that after seeing, like, just the camaraderie over there, the gyms they train in, the mountains, everything that makes this guy, it's nothing in an octagon that someone is going to do, like, that's going to beat Khabib. Like, everything can happen. A fluke can happen. We see it all the time. But I just feel like mentally there's nothing that's going to break Khabib. Like, if I feel like if, if he was ever in a situation where he had to tap, he wouldn't. Like, he would, he would just have to – I like Khabib as a person. And that's the thing that I get out of this anatomy of a fighter. It's like just hanging out with this guy in like, this type of industry. Everybody materialistic. We all want nice things. We want to live in nice places. want to drive nice cars. I do. Most people do. want to live nice and comfortable. And I saw just how happy these people was just living their lives. Like, I went to his village. I went to his mountain village, and I was in this city. And I saw these people were, were just happy.